Brandon family, come on, let's stand up on our feet. Put those hands together. It's good to be in his house, amen? Come on. stops. It never runs out. We're so grateful.
tried so hard to see it It took me so long to believe it That you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You give what we don't deserve it you take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won, I am who you say. can finally see it you're teaching me how to receive it so let all the striving cease oh this is my victory you are my champion giants for when you stand undefeated every
stripe on your back covered it all. And when I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. And when I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. I have the authority. Come on. Jesus has given me. And when I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes thankful for the victory that we have through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're thankful for the Lord that he's our champion, Lord, because he was willing, Lord, to pay the price for our sin on the cross of Calvary, God. We thank you, Lord, that now we have that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead living within us, God, and because that we've come by the way of the cross and we've yielded our lives, Lord. We've been washed in the blood. We've been set apart, Lord, from the power of sin, from the power of death, from the power of the grave, God. And we've brought into a relationship with you, God, that the final word in our life, God, is not what the world says. It's not what Satan says. It's not what society says. It's not what the cancel culture tries to deem us with. But we say, Lord, though the battle rages long, though the night is dark, God, that the light of the cross of Jesus Christ is going to shine in this world. And we are here, Lord, not just to enjoy the victory, but to share that light to those that are still bound in darkness. And God, that they will let the light of the cross of Jesus Christ lead them to a place of victory. We're thankful today that the cross has the final word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The cross has the final word. The cross has the final word. Sorrow may come in the darkest night, but the cross has the final word. 
The cross has the final word. The cross has the final word. Evil may put up its strongest fight, but the cross has the final word. shout be the loudest. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. All ye his people, praise ye the Lord. 
For he is good. He is great. And he's greatly to be praised. Amen. You know, Miss Barbara was just sharing with me something she'd heard from the Lord and that every good and perfect gift. Now, this is a word. You can find it in your Bible and it comes straight from heaven. That every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father. To open up your mouth and He would fill it. That you would hear Him plainly. And then she said, I really am hearing that there's someone in this room, and you could be watching online also, that feels like you've been counted out. I don't know who you are, but I promise you're in the room or watching online. Because I can tell you this, she doesn't just come up here and tell me stuff off the cuff. So if, if you're standing there going, oh, wait a minute, I kind of feel like I've been counted out in life. No, you've not been counted out. Because he's going to raise you up. Amen. Listen. If you're here and maybe you don't know Jesus as Savior, or maybe you're away, you know, you made a commitment to Him at some point in your life, but you're not following Him now, and you wonder how we can sing like we sing, you wonder how we can be so excited about being in church. It's not that we're so excited about being in a building. It's that we're excited that God sent His Son to this earth who he lived in this earth, he never sinned one time, and then he died on the cross to take away the sins of the world so that anybody, whoever it may be, would come to him believing that he died for them, believing that he rose from the dead for them, and believing they could have and confess him as Lord, they would be saved. And some people say, well, save from what? Well, save from eternal damnation in hell. Nobody should ever go there. And I hear people say, well, you know, if God's such a loving God, I can't believe he would send anybody to hell. No, he, he's not sending anybody to hell. They're sending their self by not believing in what Jesus did on the cross. God's not sending people to hell. People are sending their selves. But I don't know if I believe that. Well, that's okay. You got every right to be wrong. That's fine. But are you willing to test it for eternity? Because <laughs> that's where the rubber's going to meet the road, pal. When you die. Then we'll see who's right and who's wrong. You die without Jesus, you won't be going to heaven. You won't be spending eternity with God. You won't be living in a place where there's no sorrow. You won't be living in a place where there's no sickness. You won't be living in a place where there's no pain. No, hell will be your eternal home and you'll be in a place of torment You'll be in a place of agony. You'll be in a place of anguish. And you shouldn't have went. It was never God's will for you to be there. So there's no sense in going. You can seal your eternity right now. And know where you're headed when you leave this life. Because it's a guarantee. Ten out of ten people die. Am I right or wrong? Unless you get caught up like Enoch or Elijah. You're going by the way of the grave unless Jesus returns quickly. So you better know where you're headed when you close your eyes on this side. You better know. And some people say, well, I don't, I, you know, that's a little strong. Yeah, okay, whatever. You know what? If you're too weak for this, you shouldn't be here anyway. 
if you can't take a salvation call, if you can't take dividing the line between hell and heaven, I don't even know what you're doing. I don't even know why you're in church. I don't even know why you bother. I don't even know why you have a Bible. Because you can't separate. You've got to understand there are two places you spend when you leave this life. Two options. That's it. The reason people can't take it anymore is because they had a bunch of weak preachers for generations preaching nothing. Preaching 10 ways that your dog can have a better life. Five ways that you can have better looking hair. We're going to do a 12 part series on it. They won't tell you how to get free. They won't tell you how to get the devil out of your house. They won't tell you you can be healed. They just come up with some kind of fluff to entertain everybody while they're sitting there for 15 or 20 minutes. They can be still that long. And then that's a tweetable, that's a tweetable quote. Send that out. How about, how about tweet this out? You die without Jesus, you're going to hell. Tweet that out and see who likes it. I, listen, God did not call me to put out tweetable quotes and to tickle people's ears. God called me to divide the line between heaven and hell to get people to understand that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He died for all mankind. And you have been paid for by the blood of Jesus. So to deny that, you say, well, I don't like how you yell and scream. Okay, fine, that's fine. You don't have to like it. But if you die without Jesus and go to hell, I believe part of your punishment is listening to me for eternity screaming about how awesome Jesus is. So just give your heart to the Lord now and it'll feel better for you. Amen. Come on, all in this room, I want you to bow your heads. If you don't know Jesus, or you're away from God and you know you need to come close to Him, I'm telling you, do it today. The clock is ticking on time, and it's, I, I believe it's sped up even. You know, when you're in a, uh, some sporting events and the other team's just getting skunked terribly, in football, they have a running clock. They don't ever stop it. So they can end the agony. I'm telling you, I believe we're on a running clock. The earth is groaning for the return of our Savior. People are groaning and crying out. Today's your opportunity to seal your eternity with God. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about jumping through a bunch of religious hoops. I'm talking about a relationship with an almighty God through his precious son. Right where you're at, if you're here this morning, you say, it's me. I need to give my heart to the Lord. I need to repent of sin, and I need to confess Jesus as Lord of my life. If you're in this room, I want to see your hand in the air if that's you. Thank you. Who else? I mean, this guy didn't even hesitate. That's wonderful. Because I can tell you this, sir. Jesus didn't hesitate to stretch both his arms out for you when he died on that cross. It's the smartest thing you've ever done in your entire life. Who else? If you're watching online, you say, I want to do this, preacher. Then you put up a hand emoji, and I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And Pastor Sue is going to tell you after we get done praying how to connect with us so we can connect with you. The one in this room that I know had the guts to admit they need Jesus. I'm going to give you the words for this prayer. You're going to give those words a meaning. And I'm telling you this, as sure as I know the sun came up this morning, and it'll set this evening. You're going to have a miracle come right into your life. The God of heaven is going to move into you by the way of the Holy Spirit. Your spirit that's dead right now is going to be born again. And you're going to be fit for heaven. Come on, right out loud, right out of your mouth. Say, Heavenly Father, right now, I repent 
of all sin. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died for me, that His blood cleanses me from all unrighteousness. I confess Him as Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Come on, that's great. Man, it never gets old if it's one or a hundred or a thousand. It's wonderful because it's the greatest miracle you will ever experience. Now, I've seen many miracles. I've seen deaf ears open, blind eyes open, crippled people walk, dead people come to life. All, all the great miracles that we would consider. But the greatest, the greatest, the greatest miracle is when someone gets born again. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap. I'm telling you, there is a party in heaven right now because one person gave their heart to God. What if it was you? What if it was your brother? What if it was your sister? What if it was your drunk uncle that you've been praying for? God deserves praise, amen? Because that person's life will never, ever be the same. Listen, if that was you and you gave your heart to God, we just want to get you some information so that you can thrive in this walk. We don't want you to just struggle through. We want to give you the tools to help you succeed and to be all that God's called you to be because I'm telling you, God's called you to be something great. Amen? And He had a purpose and a plan for you when He formed you in your mother's womb. And He said... I have planted out your days. I have put gifts on the inside of you that nobody can take away. You know, the devil tries to distort the gifts that God's given us. All the devil can do is take the things that God has given and try to distort them and to pervert them. But God says, give me your gift and let me do something great with it. Amen. So we want to help you do that. So if you'll just get out your phone and you'll text uh, the word decision to 270-279-1600, we can get you some information to help you succeed and to help you uh, find those gifts that God's putting down on the inside of you and use them for the building of His kingdom. Amen. And then listen, if you're here for the first time or it's just the... Uh, Maybe one of the first few times you've been here, we just want to welcome you. We want to love on you. We're glad that you chose to spend your morning with us. And so you can get out your phone and you can text the word welcome to that very same number. Text the word welcome to 270-279-1600. And we're just going to get you some information about what's happening here at Life in Christ so that you're sure not to miss anything. Amen? Amen. Are you glad you came to the house of God this morning? Yes. Yes. Listen, I'm going to go ahead. I'm up here with the microphone. I'm going to go ahead and make this plug. Ladies, let me hear you. The Women's Conference is right around the corner. The Women's Conference is May 7th and 8th. You don't want to miss it. If you haven't invited someone, you need to invite someone because I'm telling you, lives are going to be changed at this Women's Conference. We have uh, had this women's conference taken from us for the last two years, and I'm telling you, we're going we're gonna to take up ground. We're going to take back what the devil stole from us, and I believe women's lives are going to be changed. I believe there's going to be such a refreshing that happens on the inside of us, ladies. Men, you volunteer to keep the children at home. You volunteer to have supper done. I'll take care of everything. I'll clean the house. I'll get supper going. I'll get the kids. They'll be in bed so that when you come home, we can sit down and you can tell me all about the wonderful things that God's done in your life this weekend. Come on, men. Step up to the plate and make it happen for your wife. Amen? Because she needs to be here, and it's going to do you good to let her get away for the weekend and just bask in the love of God. Amen? Amen. So ladies, if you haven't signed up, men, look at your wife or uh, look at your girlfriend and ask her, have you signed up yet? Nope. Well, then I'm signing you up today. I'm going to make it happen for you. Amen. Make sure you get signed up, right? All right, listen, uh, take a look at these announcements and then Pastor Chris is going to bring the word. Hey everyone, if you've recently made a decision to follow Christ, we would love to congratulate you. So now what do you do? 
We would love to help you discover your next steps in your journey. Please get out your phone and text the word decision to the number on the screen so we can continue to stay in touch. We believe that it doesn't matter where you've been in life, only where you're going. So welcome. Our hope is that you will truly know God, find freedom from your past, discover your purpose so that you can go make a difference. As we enter into the message portion of our service, we would like to ask you to extend the courtesy of quiet to those around you who are being ministered to. We believe that you are here for a purpose and that God has something specifically He wants to say to you. Our hope is that you will leave here encouraged and closer to Him than ever before. Now, let's get ready to enjoy and receive God's Word. Yep, ladies, you really, 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 if you have not registered for this conference, you need to. And men, please don't let me hear you say that you have to babysit your kids. Oh. Well, you know, I got to stay home and babysit the kids. Hey, you help make them. They're yours. You're not babysitting them. Unless you got the neighbor's kids over keeping them. You ain't babysitting nobody. You understand? I know. I feel some of you men going, I don't like how you said that. Yeah, I don't care. I don't like how you say you're babysitting your own kids. So, <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's continue with our message for today. I'm telling you, ladies, if you are not registered for this conference, you are going to miss Maybe the opportunity of a lifetime. Right. Pastor Sue was saying that we'd had it stolen from us the last couple years. Well, what the devil steals, he has to pay back sevenfold. So I wouldn't miss it if I were you. Well, I don't really go here. What's that got to do with anything? Be here anyway. Amen. Look, y'all need to wake up. Something. Because I got heavy loads and I'm loaded for bear. <laughs> so, you might as well get amen or oh me worked out of you. So, the title is The Cure for Unbelief. The Cure for Unbelief. I know we're going to take maybe two or three weeks on this. The title may change, but it'll all be the same kind of thought. And either next week or the week after, we're going to have a, a service where we all take communion. And then it really will be a, a communion and miracle service is what it's going to be. So if you're needing uh, healing in your body for anything, you don't want to miss out. On the next two or three weeks. Praise the Lord. Now I don't know if it's God's will for that to happen. Okay, then stick around. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, turn your religious cow over here in just a minute, and we're gonna barbecue it, and it's gonna be great. Praise the Lord. The cure for unbelief. What is the cure for unbelief? Well, that would be faith. Faith is a cure for unbelief, and faith comes by hearing the Word of God. If you don't know what the Word of God says about a certain thing, subject, whatever it may be, then you're not going to develop faith in that area. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And I can tell you this, doubt comes by hearing, unbelief comes by hearing, it does. Are y'all here? Now, I hate sickness. Hate it. I hate it because God hates it. I hate it because Jesus took stripes for us to be free from it. I hate sickness just like I hate sin. I, I, can't, it just, I can't stand to watch somebody 
who says that, they, that Jesus is Lord. And you know, they'll live for God for a little while. And then they'll go out and just go absolutely haywire. And then I, I hate that because I see what sin's doing to their life. And on the flip side of that, I hate sickness just as bad because I've seen what sickness has done to the body of Christ and I cannot stand it. I absolutely cannot stand it because it's not the will of God. It is not the will of God. You say, well, I believe the Lord put this on me to teach me a lesson. Well, you believe wrong and that's not the truth. That is not scriptural. It's not. Now, I'm not saying all this stuff to try to offend people, although it's probably going to happen. But the reality is, you are not built to be sick. Sickness is illegal to be in your body. That's why I defy it every turn I can. Every time I would even feel something, I'm like, oh, no, uh-uh, no way. Jose, you can't come in here. You say, well, what about the things you don't know? Listen, I don't have to know everything. I don't have to know every known disease. The Bible says that everything under the, that's mentioned in the curse of the law, everything and then all the diseases that aren't mentioned. Now you may be sitting there thinking, dude, why do you got to get up there and scream and yell? This is just me. This is what I do. I'll do this at the kitchen table. I mean, I'm passionate about what I'm saying right now up here, just like I am at home. In fact, the other day, Sue and I were having a conversation, and she said, I just need you to tell me straight. <laughs> Very well. So I, I, just, I just preached a message to her. I just walked over there to where she was sitting, and I got about, oh, I don't know. I got about this far from her. And I just started preaching the word to her. And I mean, I'm just laying it down. I'm preaching faith. And I'm, I ain't, I'm not cutting any slack. And she's just looking at me. And she said, I need this. I need this. Keep, keep it up. I need it. And I'm just, man, I'm preaching. And I'm preaching just like I am right now. And we're in the living room by ourselves. But when we got done, she said, now, lay hands on me. Because I want an impartation of that boldness. And I'm going to believe God. I said, okay. So that's what I did. I laid hands on her, prayed for her, and she said, thank you. And praise the Lord. Now, I didn't tell you that for all the hand claps, although you should have clapped because you ought to be thanking God you got a preacher who ain't afraid to preach to people when he ain't standing up here. Because the truth is the truth no matter where you are. James Alexander Dowie. He was a, a great evangelist. He said, sickness is the foul offspring of its father, Satan, and its mother, sin. That's why I don't like sickness. I don't like sickness in anybody. Can't stand it. Because it's not the will of God. Thank you for your overwhelming agreement. Praise the Lord. <laughs> sin sickness and poverty has passed from me to Calvary. Check your Bible. Because that's what it says. Not in those exact words, but that's what it says. Righteousness, health, and blessing has passed from Calvary to me. See, when you understand who Jesus is, when you understand what he paid for, then when you understand who you are, you don't have any trouble saying what I'm saying. I'm not up here saying it because I'm a preacher. I'm not up here saying it uh, because I think I'm better than everybody. No, I'm up here saying it because years ago, way back a long time ago, I figured out who I was in Christ. I figured out what Jesus did for me. I figured out what God's will was. And so I'm just like, well, I accept that. I believe that. If God said it, that's the end of it for me. I don't, it doesn't matter to me what cancel culture says. It doesn't matter to me what, even what some preachers say. What did God say? That's what I care about. Amen. If God said it, that's the end of it. Right. Amen. Amen. Sickness is of the devil. And it's not a part of life or growing old. Well, you know, I'm past 50 now, and, and you know, well, okay. Is that what you want? Is that what you want out of life? 
I mean, you know, if you, if you sit and watch TV long enough, they'll be shoving your medicine to you in a wheelbarrow. Because you'll start taking something because you're over 50, and then you'll start taking something for that because you started taking that because you're over 50, and then you'll start taking something else because what you started taking first is making blood shoot out your eyes, so you got to take something in the third round to keep the blood from shooting out your eyes. So then you got to take the fourth thing because the third thing kept the blood from shooting out of your eyes, but it was about to make you go blind, so you had to start taking the fourth thing so you could keep... And then a year later, the first pill you started taking, now you can sue that company for making it because it made blood shoot out your eyes. But you got to take a fifth drug now because you sick. I'm like, what in the? So when we're watching TV, I DVR just about everything because commercials. Ugh. I'm like, mm-mm. Praise the Lord. But when, I, when all those... Commercials come on like that. I just rebuke. I just, I'm telling you, I talk to the TV because it's talking to me. Do you have these symptoms? I say, no. No, I don't have those symptoms, and I never will. And then I mute it and fast forward it. If you don't believe me, is Sue shaking her head? Yes. And she just sits over and laughs. She's like, babe, I said, I just want to get my licks in. I want the devil to know that I'm not taking his garbage. I'm telling you, when you think sickness is just a part of life, it becomes acceptable. But when you identify where it came from, you resist it. I resist sickness just like I resist sin. The sickness got paid for before the sin got paid for. Mark 6, 1 through 6. Man, I've got so much ground to cover. Then he went out from there and came to his own country. And his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him? that such mighty works are performed by his hands. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. That's why I laugh inside when people come to me and say, you know, so-and-so got offended the other day. I'm like, oh, okay. Does that bother you? No, not even a little. Because I didn't say anything to insult them or intentionally offend them. If the word offends you, that's not my issue. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now, I can just tell you, for those of you that think when Sue and I were living in Texas, we were all fired up about coming back here and preaching the gospel. No. We were fired up about the fact that God had sent us on an assignment. But I was not fired up about the fact that I was going to be in, preaching in a community I tried to tear down. I was not fired up about the fact that I was probably going to run into people who I'd raised nine kinds of heck with years ago, and now I'm going to be preaching the gospel. Not fired up about it. But God called us to come here on an assignment, and so I was fired up about the assignment, and then the rest just fell in place. I'm like, you know, God, I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to think this way, so I'm just going to do what you sent me to do, and then you're just going to have to work the rest out. I don't have time to sit and think about who's who and who was that, and did I run around with them, and my Lord, what did we do, and no, I'm just going to preach the gospel, and everything's just going to have to work out. Now, he could do no mighty work there. In other words, he, miracles weren't happening there. Now, how many of you know everywhere he went, miracles happened, but now miracles aren't happening, you're about to see why. Except that he laid his hands 
on a few sick folk or sick people and healed them. One verse that says folk. And he marveled, he marveled because of their unbelief. Now watch, now watch what he does. Because of their unbelief, he does the thing that causes unbelief to leave. He, he didn't get up and just, you know, tell them y'all are a bunch of sorry, sorry, worthless, no good for nothing, un- but no. He went about the villages in a circuit teaching. Why? Because when you teach the word, you, people hear the word, and when people hear the word, faith comes. When faith comes, unbelief starts to lose its grip on people. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that the word hearing there is like a continual tense, hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And I've heard the word taught on healing a gajillion times. And every time I hear it taught, I learn something else. Every time. You know, knowing, you know, you could be sitting here this morning thinking, you know, I need faith on that subject. Well, knowing you need it and not doing anything about it does nothing. It's like going and sitting in the gym, saying you know you need to get in shape and never getting on a machine. I mean, I drive by the gym three or four times a week. It hadn't done me a lick of good. And I don't even feel guilty about it now. I just drive by and look at it and go, mm-mm. Pastor, why don't you work out? Because I don't like to be sore. Just be honest. It hurts. Some of y'all won't admit it. You just, you get a membership so you can tell people you got a membership and then you never go. It's not much different with Christianity. People pack a Bible, talk about how much they love Jesus. They don't ever do anything for him. They don't live for him. They just show up at church, say, because they've learned the talk, they've learned the Christianese, and so they show up at church and talk like a Christian, and then they go live like hell for six days, and then they show back up the seventh day, talking about how much they love Jesus, and nobody can figure out why their life is in the toilet. It's pretty easy for me to figure out. You know, if you drive by the gym every day, well, I'll just leave that alone. Because <laughs> if I start throwing out weight numbers, then somebody's going, you know, how would he know how much I weigh? Why would he be talking? You know, religious, there are religious tradition and talk that keeps you from healing. You know, instead of believing God for healing, people will say, well, just keep me in prayer. Keep me in prayer. Keep me in prayer. You know, just keep me in prayer. Just, I'm like, how long are we going to keep you in prayer? How about get some faith? How about get some faith and get yourself healed and then we don't have to keep you in prayer about it. Because keeping you in prayer is not going to develop your faith. Are you here? And you know, here's a saying that I've heard, I've heard people say this down through the years. Well, you know, if you're never sick, you can never know him as healer. I won't even say what I think about that. <laughs> well, you know, preacher, if you're never sick, you could never know him as healer. Oh, really? Huh. So you can't look in the Bible and see that he's healer and just go ahead and stay healed? I'm not down on people if they're sick, but please don't stay that way. Amen. Well, you know, I just, I like talking like that because that's usually how they talk when they tell you. Well, you know, preacher, sometimes God says yes, and sometimes God says no, and sometimes God says maybe. Oh, yeah. Could you show me where that's at in Scripture? Is that in the first book of stupid? Or where is that? Or is that second unbelief? Can you show me where that's at? Because I've searched. You know, because when I first got saved, I heard all this talk, and I went to Scripture to try to find it. Couldn't find it anywhere. It wasn't in there. I'm like, I don't know what Bible these people are reading, but it is not the one that I bought at the Christian bookstore like a good Christian boy. 
I don't know what they've got. I mean, I guess they've graduated to another trans. I don't know what's happening here. I cannot find what they're saying in Scripture. No, here's what I found. Mark 11, 22 through 24. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. Why would you do that? Well, he said, For assuredly or certainly, I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt it. Now he's talking about a mountain. And I mean, I know, I'm not talking about going and moving the Himalayas to America. I'm saying some of you got a mountain in your life and you need to get rid of it. Be removed, be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. Not that he said, hey, y'all keep me in prayer. I believe something might happen. No, nothing's going to happen. Just forget it. No. No. But believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Not maybe, not might, not someday in the sweet by and by. No, he'll have it now. All right, next verse. Therefore I say, this is Jesus talking. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, God might say yes. God might say maybe, or he might say no. No. Believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Believe. You know, Vicki Kirk, prime example. I remember standing in a salon with her one day. Pray, I said, we started talking, and she said, oh, I'm fine. Well, that wasn't what the doctor was saying, but that's what she was saying, because she knew what the book said. I said, well, can we pray? Sure. We're standing in the salon praying, but I'm not praying. Oh, God, please, if it's in your will, if you could find some way to move heaven and earth to do something for Vicky. Oh, God, please. Boy, that would have sounded good, though. I'd have sounded real Christian-like. No, we just started thanking God she was whole and healthy. Why? How could we do that? Because that's what the book says. I don't care what the religious crowd says. The religious crowd never healed anybody. The religious crowd never delivered anybody. No, the word of God is what does the healing and the delivering. And you putting that in your heart and out of your mouth gets things done. Here's another religious saying. You know, people believe God. Well, I believe God heals, but it may not be for everybody. Okay. Well, that's a great theology. Do you believe he saves everybody? How, how could you do that? I mean, how could, how could you believe that it's God's will that everybody be saved if you don't believe that it's God's will for everybody to be healed? Well, I know people that died. Yeah, well, I know people that went to hell. And I feel like I've been on, I feel like the last couple months I've been on a mission to destroy theology that's led people astray I, I don't I don't listen I believe it's God's will that everybody be born again why because that's what he said in his word well same token I believe it's God's will for everybody to be healed well how could you say that preacher I mean my family member died well okay I've had family members that died too but that doesn't change that everywhere Jesus went he healed them all that doesn't change that when God led the, people, the children of Israel out three million people he led three million people out and the Bible says in Psalm 105 that not one among them was feeble Not one among them was, I'm telling you, three million people, not one among them coming out there going, hang on, Moses. I'll be there. That, I'm telling you, it'd take America 40 years to get around the mountain because we'd be waiting on everybody dragging up the rear. No, not one among them. There it is right there in Scripture. He brought them out with silver and gold and there was none feeble among his tribes. So that's why I declare health. That's why I say I'm going to live long and strong. Why? Because the Bible says I can. If you want to die early, go ahead. But I'm going to stay here and do what God called me to do. I'm going to heaven anyway. So I might as well be here as long as I can. I'm telling you, it's pretty fun. 
Life, life. He said, oh, the world's rotten. I know. That's why we're here, to try to save the rotten. Amen. If everybody gets it done, we'll get done quicker, and we can all go to the house. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't for all, then what about Isaiah 53? Huh. You know, if it's not for all, surely, certainly, he's borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Well, who's our? If I said, our, I mean, I'd be including everybody, yes? I'm no English major. You figured that out. But, I mean, come on. I know a little bit. Surely he has borne our griefs. I just say it like this. Surely he bore my griefs. Surely he carried my sorrow. Yet I esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace. Like it should have been me getting whipped. My, the chastisement for my peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Are. Meaning it's present. Amen. Now Isaiah was looking forward. In 1 Peter 2, 24, Peter was looking back. At what Jesus did. And he said by whose stripes ye were healed. Who himself bore our sin. In other words he took our sin into him. He became. The Bible says that he that knew no sin became sin. He became sin. That's why God turned his back on him. The spotless Lamb of God had become the thing that had stained the entire creation of mankind. And God could not look upon him. Himself, Jesus himself, bore our sin. Now, take it off of everybody else and put it on you. Jesus himself bore my sin in his body on the tree. That me having died to sin, might live to righteousness. By whose stripes you were, I was healed. Now you'll hear people say, well, you know, I believe that's just spiritual healing. No, it's not spiritual healing. Spiritual healing is you being born again. Then there's a physical healing. And by the way, if you think it's for your spiritual healing, let me ask you this. When they laid them 39 stripes on him at that whipping post, why did he go to the cross? If you're so dead set on it being for spiritual healing, then why did he get up from there and go to the cross? It was a waste of time then. Uh, I guess a, a good word for it would be redundant. Why would he go there? Well, he paid for your healing at the whipping post, and then he went to the cross to pay for your sin. Two totally different things. Well, if it's not God's will to heal all, then faith can't come by hearing. You must... I, there's no way I can get finished today. If it's not God's will to heal all, then faith can't come by hearing. If it's not God's will for everybody to be saved, faith can't come by hearing. Amen. If it's not God's will to heal all, then faith can't come by hearing. You'll have to get some kind of special revelation. I'm going to tell you something. When you hear a preacher or anybody say they've gotten a special revelation and it goes crosswise of that word, don't listen to the next thing that comes out of their mouth unless they're falling on their knees repenting before God. Amen. 
If God's promises are not for all, then we can't develop faith. Sounds good, preacher. But you know, we just can't really know God's will. I've heard that crap for 20 years. And the people that I hear it from are the people that haven't developed in the area of healing. And they're real religious. And it sounds real good. But it's a crutch of unbelief that they've packed their self around on for half their life. Well, you can't, I'm telling you, I don't, I don't get too worked up about stuff, but that works me up. For someone to stand and tell me that you can't know the will of God, I'm like, then why are we even doing this? This has got to be the dumbest thing that a human could ever do then. If we can't know God's will, why are we here? No, God's word is his will. And that's how you discover the will of God is getting his word. That's why I know 100% without any doubt in my heart that it is God's will that people be whole and healthy. It, there's no doubt. And if you're trying, if you're hearing anything, well, I bet I can prove you wrong. You're late to the party. You can't beat it out of me with a Louisville slugger. There's no way it's coming out of me because I put it in and ground it into myself because I know what the Word of God says about it. If it wasn't God's will to heal everybody, then Jesus would not have went. Either Jesus was the biggest rebel on earth or he was doing the will of God. Because everywhere he went, he healed people. His authority was so strong, they shoved the boat up on a beach and a demon-possessed man ran out and fell at his feet and started to worship him. He didn't even say anything. He just showed up. No, it's God's will for you to be whole and for you to be healthy. Amen. Oh, man, this is a lot. I've never been taught this. Good. I'm glad you're here to hear it and you need to be back next week. And the week after that. And then you just need to go ahead and plant yourself here. That way you can learn what the Bible really says about how to believe God. We don't know everything about Scripture, but we know a lot about Scripture. And there's a lot of people in this room that walk to this pulpit that know a lot about Scripture. We don't have it all figured out. Nowhere has it all figured out. But I can tell you this, if you're sitting in a church and they're trying to preach you into the grave, you need to run from that place. Amen. Now, I don't preach you into the grave. I tell you about the grave can't hold you down and you're going to come out of the grave because that's what the Bible says. I'm telling you, they're going to have a hard time getting me there. They're going to be like, man, he won't die. He won't die. And I know I, that, that even rubs people raw. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Moses was 120 and his eyes didn't even grow dim. Caleb was 86 and he declared, give me my mountain. Elijah was an old man and he outran a chariot. So, you know, if you want to claim getting old and decrepit, go ahead. We'll say nice things about you when we bury you. If you want to live long, and live strong, then you need to adopt what this book says. You need to put it in your heart and you need to resist every ache and every pain and every sickness and everything that comes down the way. You need to resist it with every fiber in you. I mean, you need to push back against hell every chance you get. Amen. Man, I don't want to quit.
Come on, everybody bow your heads. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pray a mass prayer. And if you're in this room and, and faith has come alive in you, listen, I'm not doing this to keep you in prayer. If faith has come alive in you and you need something, you need a healing in your body, then right where you're at, I just want you to raise one hand to heaven. Now listen to me. You keep your hand up. When I pray, you receive. You receive. Don't go out of here talking sickness. Don't go out of here talking death. You go out of here talking healing because that's what God talks. You start saying what God says. You start believing what God says. In the name of Jesus. I take authority over every sickness and disease. And I command you right now, you bow your knee to the name of Jesus and you leave their lives in Jesus' name. I command you to go out of them. I command arthritis, leave them. I command blood disease, leave them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I command swelling in the joints leave in Jesus name diabetes go in Jesus name cancer die at the root in Jesus name lupus leave in the name of Jesus every other sickness not mentioned leave their lives now in Jesus name if you believe it let your shout be the loudest Hallelujah, Lord, we praise your holy name. Thank you, Father. I tell you, you just hang around with him long enough. You just hang around with Pastor Chris long enough and let your faith just rise. That's what's happened to me over the years, just hanging out with him. It's caused my faith to just rise up. Every day is not easy. But when you use the faith, every person's been given a measure of faith. And you just start using that measure, and it'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Amen? Your faith is what moves the mountains. Amen. Listen, this is our time of service where we get to worship God and our tithe and our offering. It's one of my most favorite times. Although, I like, I like to do this and, and I like to pray over our tithe and offering, but I do this at home every time uh, when, when we get paid. I do it by text to give. That's how we choose to do it. And Yesterday, I just, I just kind of tested Pastor Chris. He was walking through the house and praying and stuff, and so I just turned the volume up on my phone and I was getting ready and they were, zzz, zzz. and as soon as he heard it, he stopped. And he looked at me and I said, it's going to happen again. Because that's what our, my phone does whenever I, I send out a message and it sends me one back. And he says, I love it. Blessing going out, blessing going in. Blessing going out, blessing going in. See, God doesn't want to take anything from you. He wants to get all he has to you. Amen. It's called being in covenant with God. Father, I thank you for every tither, every giver. I thank you, Lord, that as they are in covenant with you, it's that blessing going out and blessing coming in. Father God, we're blessed to be a blessing, not only as individuals, but as a house. And so, Lord, bless this house so that we can be a blessing all over this community, all over this nation all over this world and we praise you for it in Jesus name amen amen listen if you all joined us online God bless you we're so glad that you took the time to spend time with us we love you we hope to see you soon and I believe that God's favor rests upon you today in the name of Jesus amen
thank you for joining us here at Life in Christ Church. We are so glad that you tuned in and we would love for you to join us here at any of our in-person services. For more information about us here at Life in Christ Church, check out our Facebook page or our website. We hope the rest of your day is blessed and remember, it's not where you've been in life, only where you're going.